Hey guys, Dr. Daphne Lim, board certified dermatologist. Today we'll be talking about how to treat acne, how you can treat acne uh, in pregnancy. What to do which is safe, what to do over the counter. And later on, I'll give you a little insight in regards to how my profession as a dermatologist, how we approach hormonal and pregnancy induced acne. So not that we want to fence it, but 50% of acne gets better in pregnancy and unfortunately the other 50% gets worse. So the cause is obviously hormonal, yeah? And most often uh, females are on the pill, for example, oral contraceptive pill, which may contain soprotone acetate, which is an anti-hormone, or drospirinone, which is an anti-hormone as well. So brands like uh, Yaz, Yasmin, Diane, Estelle, Juliet, they all contain anti-hormones. And as soon as you come off the pill uh, and try to fall pregnant, usually within one to three months, uh, if you're gonna get acne, that usually occurs then. Uh, and it's unfortunate because all this time, basically, we're masking the actual hormonal input for acne. And when pregnancy arrives, together with the stress of pregnancy and the hormonal influx, um, that's when 50% uh, of uh, patients with acne, that actually gets worse, yeah? So what can you do? What can you try at home that is both cost-effective, effective, but most importantly, safe, yeah? So the first thing we can do is to use simple washes. Um, so but prior to the washes, I would always preach um, holistic management of acne, yeah? So most dermatologists, before we even go for our script pad, we would like patients to try um, diet, yeah? So simple things like diet can help because uh, foods high in dairy, so dairy constituents, for example, milk, yogurt, that can make acne worse, as well as high sugar foods. So um, foods which have a, um, a very high content of processed uh, or refined sugars, uh, that's bad, yeah? So try to go for your fresh, natural, non-processed. Anything you can find in the packet, generally speaking, is bad. But anything you can buy that's raw, that you have to cook, generally speaking, that's considered good. So look, that's probably a good place to start, yeah? Because most of us don't want to use uh, any form of drugs, yeah? Um, so that's probably the first place. Diet, lifestyle changes, lifestyle modification. So what else can you do? Okay, cleansers. So what cleanser could you try? Salicylic acid, yeah? So now the flip side is this. Most dermatologists, I know most of my colleagues, including myself, will not use a salicylic acid peel in pregnancy. Uh, however, would be fine to actually uh, advocate a salicylic uh, acid wash because peels, they range from anywhere between eight, 10% all the way to 30% uh, and they're, they're left on. Whilst washes are uh, usually about 2% and you put it on and you wash it off. So the absorption of salicylic acid is extremely small with washes. So something like um, Neutrogena, they make a good one. It's oil-free wash, it's relatively cheap. Uh, you can try that, especially for comedomal acne, blackhead acne. And you might want to try once a day if you have no redness, burning, stinging, irritation, you can start using twice a day. So salicylic acid wash is the first thing. If you have access to an alpha hydroxy acid wash or glycolic acid wash, you can combine that with the salicylic acid, providing you don't have any skin irritation. Most dermatologists prefer salicylic acid because it's more lipophilic. In other words, it goes into the oil glands a little bit better compared to AHAs. But AHAs, if you're using something like an AHA 10, AHA 15, super safe in pregnancy. Uh, so that is what we advocate. If we're going to go for a peel, that would be the peel of choice, either lactic or um, alpha hydroxy acid slash glycolic acid peel. Now, topically, what can you use or what creams can you use? Unfortunately, in pregnancy, you can't use things like this, like retinol. Retinol, retinoids are all vitamin A derivatives and they get uh, converted to retinoic acid. Um, so that's retinol to retinoic acid. Retinoic acid, unfortunately, is teratogenic. In other words, it has been shown to cause malformations in babies, especially, uh, well, in the newborn, um, especially at high concentrations. So things like isotretinoin. Um, and that is why um, there's a pregnancy warning with uh, Accutane and Roaccutane. So it trickles down all the way down from the uh, Roaccutane, uh, Accutane, all the way down to your uh, prescription retinoids, your tazarotene, um, your adapalene, as well as your tretinoin, and trickles all the way down to retinol as well. So that's a no-no. Um, most of us are okay with, in the context of prescription, topical retinoids in the context of lactation, uh, but 
most of us, in fact, I don't think I have any of my colleagues would be gutsy enough to prescribe a uh, retinoid, uh, even yeah, even a retinol uh, in pregnancy, right? So that's a no. What else can you use? But you can use azelic acid. Azelic acid um, is a category A slash category B, depending on what country you're at. It's super safe. You can buy that as a um, topical. So things like As Clear, Phenacia, uh, these are all trusted brands. Um, even Paula's Choice has got one, yeah? So it ranges from 5 to 15%. So azelic acid can kill bacteria, right? So it can be anti-inflammatory. And it can also be a keratolytic. In other words, it can normalize your oil glands. So azelic acid is very safe in what we advocate as well. So we talked about um, benzyl peroxide, haven't we? So benzyl peroxide is uh, BPO, which is um, an oxidizing agent. So that's a second wash or, um, yeah, second wash you can try after salicylic acid. Just don't combine it because otherwise you'll get skin irritation. So benzyl peroxide is Benzac AC. It's also known as proactive. So concentrations vary between two all the way to 10%. Um, it's great if you're using uh, BPO to start off at about two, 2.5%. Um, and the trick is to actually apply it, for example, as a face wash. Uh, wash, leave on for at least 60 seconds uh, before washing off, yeah. Uh, because it works as an oxidizing agent, it needs to get into your oil glands and kill the bacteria. So we talked about uh, salicylic acid washes, we talked about azelic acid, we talked about benzyl peroxide, we talked about diet, um, and we talked about a couple of the other peels. What else can you try? Uh, believe it or not, the one of the most effective things for acne, especially if you're pregnant, is, is uh, light treatment, yeah? So it's called phytotherapy. Dermatologists have been using phytotherapy for many decades, and uh, even with acne, we know that red and blue light, especially the blue light spectrum, anywhere between 400 and 5 nanometers, all the way up to about 440, 450 nanometers. Um, that's blue light, can actually kill um, the bacteria that causes acne, you have to see acnes. Now, what, you know, I have a lot of people ask, why, when we talk about sun protection, why do some dermatologists say, why don't you go out and get some sunlight uh, when you have acne? Reason being is that you can wear sunscreen. Now, sunscreen, here is the photobiology. Sunscreen protects UVB. UVB is the burning um, spectrum, yeah? But it also protects uh, UVA, and the good ones protect against long wave UVA. It does not protect against visible light. So <laughs> well, you can actually put sunscreen on. So if you have acne, if you're really struggling, if you're pregnant, if, you, if you're um, undergoing conception, uh, and you don't want to try anything else, seriously, do this. Use some sunscreen, use some good sunscreen, go out in the sun, something like uh, midday, not midday sun, mid-morning sun or mid-afternoon sun. Just go there for 15 minutes every day, right? So we're not, I'm not asking you to go out there to get burnt. I'm not asking you to go out and get a tan. I'm not asking you to go out there and <laughs> get more wrinkles, but sensible sunlight. The reason being is that sunscreen protects you against uh, UVB, UVA. It allows visible light to go through. It's the visible light spectrum uh, with the blue and with the red, usually at around 610 to about 640 nanometers. So that goes straight through sunscreen. Those two wavelengths of light activate the porphyrins which C acnes produce. So the bacteria itself produce chemicals. The chemicals are light sensitive. You're using natural sunlight to activate the chemicals to kill the bacteria to decrease your amount of zits, pustules, cysts, papules, the whole lot. So sensible sunlight is uh, super important. Okay, so what else can you try? Um, we've talked about, uh, I guess, over-the-counter preparations. How do dermatologists approach um, acne in pregnancy? The first thing we do is, uh, most importantly, yeah, is, is like I said, most of us would encourage you guys to go on um, lifestyle changes, including diet. Generally speaking, when you see a dermatologist, you've exhausted everything else. Yeah, you've tried over-the-counter preparations, you've had light, you've had diet modifications, you've had washes, the whole lot. So most of us would advocate, or most of us would um, take out the script because that's what we do, we prescribe, yeah? So, in fact, I had a patient just come by to me last week and goes, well, you know what, I've seen other dermatologists and all they want to do is prescribe. Yes, that's what we do, we prescribe. We try to prescribe um, lifestyle changes prior to seeing us, and hence that's why these videos are very important because it gives you a heads up. But when you see a dermatologist, most of us uh, would have, or most patients would have exhausted everything else. And you know, 
considering our training, yes, we, you know, I reach for the prescription pad. Well, not really these days, but I still reach for the prescription pad if I need to get the job done efficiently uh, and effectively as well. So a dermatologist would uh, probably prescribe uh, category A topicals. Yeah. So the first thing we'd do is probably go for um, erythromycin. So something like Eric Acne in a gel. Uh, you can get uh, er erythromycin together with zinc, uh, zinerate, uh, especially in Europe. So I remember when I'm working in uh, the UK and United Kingdom many moons ago, um, I used to prescribe a lot of zinerate. Um, and that's the other thing as well. Uh, zinc supplementation is super safe, uh, something like zinc sulfate, and it can help with acne as well. So if you want to try a naturopathic way of doing things prior to seeing a derm, zinc is the way to go. Um, yeah, so we start off with erythromycin, uh, but that, that's category A. So we want to, we don't want to use tablets. Most of us don't want to use tablets. Sometimes if we're pushed at the third trimester, we may use um, erythromycin orally. So topically, what else can we use? Uh, this is how dermatologists approach it. We go erythromycin, and then after that, we might go clindamycin, something like clindatech, because it's still a category A. So uh, those are our two go-to antibiotics. Things like um, traditional, I guess, topicals like, uh, sorry, t traditional um, tablets, things like tetracycline, doxycycline, minocycline, they're not um, authorized in pregnancy that can cause uh, abnormalities of the uh, teeth, yeah? So, formation of um, teeth in, in the neonates. So um, we do not advocate that. None of us would prescribe uh, tetracyclines, uh, doxy and all in, in pregnancy. Um, going up from there, we use our own phototherapy. So either things like uh, blue lights, so either a blue light lamp, for example, Omnilux, um, Claresca makes it as well. Most of us don't want to use the um, biophotonics with Claresca. We take out the amino levinic acid topical uh, and we would use the uh, two wavelengths of blue light uh, somewhere around 420 to 440 nanometers and probably cook that for a couple of minutes. The other thing we can use is the red light. So, well, light in the red spectrum, uh, which is around 610 to 630, 640 nanometers. So that's super safe as well because we're using light to activate the porphyrins. But when we use light, it's a lot more, um, a lot stronger compared to um, what you get from exposure uh, going out in the sun. So what we prescribe, um, for example, it's you know um, 37 millijoules over seven minutes, 30 seconds using our Actolite. In that seven minutes, 30 seconds, you probably get the same amount of, to get the same amount of light, you probably need to be out in the sun for um, two to three hours because that's the activation time that we use for daylight photodynamic therapy. So um, yeah, we use our, our own red, our own blue. Sometimes we use lasers. So things like 595, any of the vascular lasers. Um, we can also use IPL or BBL and we can easily put in the filter. We can use a blue light filter for 20 nanometers or we can go up to a red light filter and cook it with that. So light is super safe in pregnancy. Lasers in the context of um, vascular lasers to decrease at low level lasers to decrease the amount of um, acne activity. Most of us would uh, advocate that they're safe as well. Um, Look, guys, I hope you liked that video. It just gives you an insight in regards to um, acne, how common it is, how to treat it, how to manage it safely. And if you guys are pregnant out there, there are ways to treat it uh, efficiently. In most cases, um, the over-the-counter preps, which I outline, will give you a good result. Guys, please uh, comment, like, share, subscribe. Uh, I'll see you next week. Bye for now.